Hello, this is Monica Reinagel. Welcome to the Nutrition Diva Podcast, episode number 403. Today we're talking about the big debate going on right now at the FDA about which foods should be allowed to market themselves as quote-unquote healthy. The FDA is asking for public comment on this issue, and wouldn't you know, I do have an opinion on this. And in addition to sharing my thoughts with the FDA, I thought I'd share them with you as well. At the end of the podcast, I've also got a great listener Q&A on a weight loss supplement that has some interesting scientific research to back it up. I want to thank this week's sponsor, Casper Mattress. Casper is a sleep brand that created one perfect mattress and then decided to sell it directly to consumers, eliminating commission-driven inflating prices. An in-house team of engineers spent thousands of hours developing the Casper mattress. It combines springy latex foam and supportive memory foams for a sleep service that's got just the right sink and just the right bounce. Plus, its breathable design sleeps cool to help you regulate your temperature throughout the night. Time Magazine named this one of the best inventions of 2015. Casper offers free delivery and free returns in the U.S. and Canada with a 100-night home trial. If you don't love it, they will pick it up and refund you everything. And you can get $50 toward any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash diva. And that's spelled C-A-S-P-E-R dot com slash diva. And don't forget to use the offer code diva to save $50. Some terms and conditions apply. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is the agency that gets to decide what kind of health claims American food manufacturers can make about their products. The claim that you'll find on a box of Cheerios cereal, for example, stating that Cheerios helps you lower your cholesterol, is allowed to be there only because the FDA has approved it. Make a claim that the FDA hasn't approved and you may find yourself in a heap of trouble. That's what happened to the small company that makes Kind Snack Bars. Kind Bars, I'm sure you've seen them. They're made primarily out of nuts, whole grains, and other wholesome ingredients. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being a completely unprocessed food and 10 being the most highly processed food you can think of, I'd put them at about a 3. The nutrition values vary, but I'm impressed that there are at least a half a dozen flavors that have only five grams of added sugar or less. That's pretty good for a snack bar. And yet, when Kind Bars tried to promote their bars as being healthy, they were pursued by the FDA for making false claims. The FDA argued that Kind Bars were too high in fat to be labeled healthy, even though the moderate amount of fat in these bars came from nuts. Hello, FDA? It's the 21st century calling. Fat is no longer considered unhealthy, particularly the healthy fats found in nuts. In fact, the American Heart Association recommends that we eat an ounce of nuts every single day, and a kind bar probably contains about half of that recommended serving. To their credit, Kind pushed back against this ridiculous regulation, and they won. The FDA went home to update its criteria for what kinds of foods can be labeled as healthy. And they're in the middle of that process right now, and we're currently in the phase where they're soliciting comments from the public about what criteria we should use to determine whether a packaged food can be labeled as healthy. You can be sure that industry representatives as well as lobbyists for other points of view, will all be arguing for criteria that are friendly to their own products and or hostile to foods that they would like to sanction. Dr. Neil Barnard, for example, who is a prominent vegan activist, is lobbying against any criteria that would allow meat products to be labeled as healthy. And I'm sure that General Mills and Kellogg's are trying to secure a definition that would include more of their ready-to-eat cereals, and so on and so on. As I've already shared with many of you on Facebook and Twitter, I think this is a somewhat futile exercise. Almost any criteria you can think of will end up excluding wholesome foods or endorsing foods that aren't particularly healthy. A requirement that limited added sugar, for example, could exclude things like regular soda, but allow things like pasteurized apple juice and diet soda to be labeled as healthy. 
and the low-fat criteria that excluded kind bars did allow things like fat-free pudding cups to be labeled as healthy. And no matter what criteria we ultimately arrive at, food manufacturers will find ways to tweak their low-nutrition foods in ways that meet those criteria without substantially improving the nutritional profile of those foods. This entire conversation is missing the larger point. No food product can reasonably be declared to be healthy, or unhealthy for that matter, in a vacuum. And if you've ever emailed me or posted on Facebook to ask me whether a certain food was good or bad for you, and hundreds of you have done this, well then you know that my next questions are always these. Number one, how much of it are you eating? If you're drinking 20 ounces of soda every day, I am concerned. If you have a small soda with your popcorn at the movies once a month, I'm probably not going to bat an eyelash. Number two, What else are you eating? Cured and processed meats, for example, have a bad reputation for increasing your risk of certain cancers. However, when consumed with plenty of vegetables, this risk virtually disappears. Number three, what would you be eating instead if you weren't eating that? A meal replacement bar might not seem like a great choice compared to a salad, but if it's that or a bag of M&M's, I think I'd vote for the meal replacement bar. And finally, what are your individual needs and goals? Do you need to limit sodium? Are you diabetic or pre-diabetic? Are you trying to lose weight or maybe trying to gain weight? As we've been talking about over the last few weeks, foods often have a mix of good and bad points, and how you weigh these is going to depend on the larger context as well as your personal situation. So given all of this and the fact that healthy claims will inevitably do more to benefit food marketers than they will to benefit consumers, I think we should abandon the whole enterprise. Let's just have the manufacturers list the ingredients and the nutrition facts, and then let's learn to make good choices based on something other than marketing claims. Of course, if most of the foods that you buy don't have packages and ingredient lists, the less you have to worry about the ones that do. What are your thoughts on this topic? You can post them at quickanddirtytips.com where you'll find a transcript of today's episode along with the entire show archives and also a link in case you want to post your own thoughts on the FDA's website or join the always lively conversation on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. Before I wrap up, I also wanted to highlight a great question that I got from Beth this week about a nutritional supplement called R-lipoic acid, which has been studied as a potential weight loss aid. Beth forwarded me a very interesting study showing that this supplement caused subjects to lose more weight versus those taking a placebo. However, there was a catch. The cost of the supplement, which is available at your local drugstore, is not insignificant. In fact, in this one study, it amounted to about $140 for every additional pound lost. There were a few other strange things about this study as well, and you can join the discussion on how much you'd be willing to pay to lose a pound or five. You can find that post on my blog at nutritionovereasy.com. Thanks for listening and for all your great comments, your questions, topic suggestions, and for the reviews that you've posted on iTunes and Stitcher and wherever else you review content that you enjoy. If you know someone else who might enjoy this podcast or any of the other wonderful Quick and Dirty Tips podcasts, I hope you'll tell them about us. And now have a great week and remember to eat something good for me.